Happy Platinum Jubilee, everybody. And yes, we will be taste testing everything here today. Get ready. Hi everyone, it's me. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Alana and I'm a Canadian, but I have been living here in the UK for the last six years. And for the first time ever in British history, we are celebrating the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. If you like this video and you want to see more videos of what it's truly like being a foreigner living in the UK, please consider subscribing. But without further ado, let's go. So first things first, what is this Jubilee thing happening? What is it? That's a great question. So on February 6th, 6th, February 6th, <laughs> 2022, I know it's 2022. Can you believe it? The queen celebrated 70 years on the throne. Okay. This is not the queen's 70th birthday. No, this is 70 years as queen. Absolutely crazy. Can I say girl power? <laughs> 70 years at the same job? Can you imagine? Now, perhaps you were like me and you said, well, if it was in February when she celebrated 70 years, it's now June. Why is this happening now? That is also a good question. Essentially, the queen's February 6th anniversary is also the anniversary of when her father died, which is, you know, a little bit sad. So rather than celebrating it on the day of his death, they've had some stuff throughout the year, but now in June is when we're having the real party. And guess what? That includes a four day weekend. I know. I also kind of think they saved it for June because it's just a nicer time to celebrate. Like nobody's gonna wanna have a party in February. Not in England, definitely not. So while King George the sixth, why I can't say sixth, <laughs> while he died February, she then ascended the throne, she becomes queen, yay, queenie, good for you. 70 years, now we are here. Rather than celebrating in February, we're having the bulk of it right now. So there's lots of parties, there's lots of parades. I kind of contemplated going to London for this video, but to be completely honest, it sounds like a nightmare and I just can't be bothered. So instead we are here at home cozy and I would like to talk to you about all this junk back here. <laughs> now, if you are a foreigner living in the UK like me, perhaps you have seen this fancy little royal seal on certain food and drink items. What is that? Can I say again, good question. We have this thing called by appointment of her majesty, which is essentially when the royal family bestows upon a company a formal seal. So the queen and royal family members get to pick these companies and they're typically companies that the royal family actually uses, gives this royal seal to the company. The company can then smack it on their food products to be a bit fancy, bit a bit royal, if you will. So today I raided the cupboards and I went to the local supermarket to buy some more stuff of products that have this particular royal seal. And I'm gonna taste test all of them. I hope you enjoy. First up, salt. Yes. <laughs> Malden sea salt. Well, they do other salts, but we get their sea salt flakes. This is their like new updated design. They used to have sort of a plain packaging, which we also have, but it was unopened and I didn't want to open it. Established 1882. Wow. So these guys have the seal on the back. Master salt makers. To be honest, we use this all the time. It's just you're just good. I'm just gonna eat a couple flakes to be completely honest. I said I'm gonna taste test all of them. And so here we are. Cheers. Mmm, salty. Oh yeah, real salty. Delicious. Next, <laughs> can we just have a moment of silence for my stomach? Next we have mustard. Now, this is a warning to all foreigners watching. You think, okay, Coleman's mustard. It's a h historical mustard. Can we say that? Now this says, established 1814. And of course it has the seal real small up top. Okay, foreigners, <laughs> you think, okay, mustard. I know mustard. You don't know mustard because this is English mustard and it's very different. Now we actually have this in the cupboard because shockingly, I do like it on certain things. Like say you got a really nice 
um, sausage roll that comes out of the oven and you put just like a tiny, tiny little bit of English mustard on the sausage roll, okay? Um, and when I say tiny, I mean tiny because English mustard, I hate this so much. English mustard is not American mustard and I'll tell you why. Oh, hello. That goes right up your sinuses. Okay, so this is so much stronger and can I say potent without being weird? It's way more potent than what we consider mustard, which is actually American mustard. And you can get that here in the UK. Um, and if that's what you're looking for, please buy that because this is not that. It is good in the smallest quantities imaginable, in my humble opinion, but I know some people love it. Coleman's mustard. I need to wash that. I need to wash that down with something. Next, we have Schweppes. Now, Schweppes, great company, not sponsored, obviously, none of this is sponsored. Um, I went for their classic ginger ale, as you can see, the um, by appointment to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II Schweppes Holdings Limited, manufacturers of Schweppes and Roses soft drinks. I think I've been saying by appointment of Her Majesty. This says by appointment to Her Majesty. Please don't come after me in the comments. It's probably too late. Anyway, wash down that mustard with a little bit of ginger ale. Don't mind if I do. Cheers. That's great. That's great. Real good. Now down here, I don't know if you can see it. It says 1783. Is that when Schweppes came into existence? 1783? Are we sure about that? Wow. Next, we have one that I can never pronounce. This. An Angostra. I'm so sorry. Aromatic bitters. So this is a product of Trinidad and Tobago and it drives me absolutely nuts. So they purposely, the label is too big for the bottle. That's just how it is. And right on the front, you can see by appointment to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Now these are bitters that you'd put in like, we use them in cocktails. I can't say that I've ever just tasted it on its own, but here we are. Anyway, you can read all about all about it on the side if you like. Um, we don't have time for that. Oh my God, that's worse than the mustard. This tastes like cough syrup when it's by itself, but in a drink, in a cocktail, absolutely delicious. Now I will also say in terms of cocktails and things, the royal seal or whatever you want to call it the appointment to her majesty yada 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 a lot of champagne brands on that list you can look at the full list online i cannot afford champagne for a video <laughs> so just use your imagination next we have cadbury bourneville cocoa now cadbury is a obviously a big company and it does have the seal of approval we had this kicking around in the cupboard. Um, you can add it to like cooking or to like hot chocolate type stuff. Cheers. And that is worse than the bitters. Oh, I just got flashbacks to like the cinnamon challenge. While we're talking about Cadbury, let's talk about the best Cadbury, in my humble opinion, dairy milk. Now, we've had many a video about British junk food and chocolate and all that kind of stuff. Time and time again, I come back to just the plain dairy milk Cadbury. This is truly wonderful. The best chocolate I think I've had in this particular country. Some countries, perhaps Switzerland, perhaps Belgium, have some pretty decent chocolate. This is certainly one of my favorites. Now. Um, when you look at it, there is no seal. They actually hide the seal on the back underneath the little flap. You have this tiny, tiny little seal, which is, in my opinion, can I say a bit baller? <laughs> What's the adult version of saying that's baller? It's um, quite confident, I guess. 
that you are confident enough that you can hide that away. You don't even care if it's on show. I mean, most people know that Cadbury does have the seal. Uh, most people love Cadbury for what it is. And I couldn't be happier to be eating this right now. Oh my God. <laughs> Cheers. Oh my God. Now, typically I like chocolate that has like bits in it, like maybe a biscuity kind of stuff or a wafer, like something crunchy is my preferred like chocolate bar texture, if you will. But honestly, Cadbury Dairy Milk, just au naturel, is so deliciously perfect as it is. And if you are coming to the UK, of course, try as much food as you can. It's so much fun. But please try Dairy Milk just by itself. And I think you will have a moment of enlightenment, to be completely honest. Cheers. Oh my God. Next up, we have Twinings, or what I affectionately refer to them as Twinnings, and I get roasted in the comments. Now, I don't know if the queen drinks pomegranate green tea, but to be completely honest, I saw that at Tesco and I thought, ooh, that sounds nice. I'm gonna try it. Now, I think everybody knows Twinings has the, the seal. It's quite prominent right on the front. Pomegranate though, green tea. Look at that, everybody. Cheers. Ooh, that's hot. Ooh, that's actually pretty good. Now, while I was brewing this, I was just thinking, I should probably mention that not all British people like the royal family and not all British people will be celebrating the Platinum Jubilee, whether it is the first in history or not. Just kind of saying that just in case you weren't aware. I think a lot of people, whether they hate the royal family or not, I think a lot of people are a bit more neutral towards the queen, kind of cause she's like your nan, like she's always been there. She's been ruling for 70 years. For most of us, that is more than our entire lifetime. That's like two of my lifetimes. More than two of my lifetimes. So I think some people, even if they really dislike the royal family or they're neutral about the royal family, they don't really care. I think most people have like some either affection or they put up with the queen because she's the queen. She's like your nan, she's always been there. All right, you know what? This pomegranate, I'm not normally a green tea kind of lady. Um, if I'm gonna drink tea, I typically drink Yorkshire. It's just the only voice I can say that in. Uh, this pomegranate green tea though is quite nice. It tastes like pomegranate. So not bad. Moving right along. This video is gonna be like a million years long. We have Bendix, which in my head, I read this as Benedix and I may switch to that. Um, without noticing and I'm deeply sorry. So these are chocolatey mints. Um, can I say great packaging by the way? Oh, look at that. Um, so these are actually made in Germany. A little German history over here, eh? Anyway, these remind me of After Eights. I imagine these predate After Eights. Cheers. Oh, that's good really minty. I really should have had these last. <laughs> Why did I have these halfway through? It's gonna be like taste testing everything with, with toothpaste in my mouth. <laughs> Delicious. I just had a quick Google. So Bendix, as per Wikipedia, take this with a grain of salt, says that the dark mint chocolates are still made of the original recipe from 1931 which is pretty cool. Now that my mouth tastes like dark chocolate and peppermint, let's have some gin, shall we? I think that most people know that Gordon's has the seal, has the royal seal right on the front. Established in 1769, this is London Gordon's dry gin, or London gin, special dry, it doesn't matter. And yes, I am going to take a swig. If you've ever had gin on its own, then you know, I can already smell it. Cheers. <laughs> it 
If you are still watching this video and you are not subscribed, how could you? To get that taste out of our mouths, let's move on to McVitie's Digestives. Now this packaging is absolutely just exploding with crap because it's currently sponsored by Britain's Got Talent, which is currently not sponsoring me. Bit rude if you ask me, but I went for the McVitie's Digestives Milk Chocolate. There are tons of different types, but these are always a good shout. If you're ever in doubt, go for these ones. Cheers. That's really good. So McVitie's is actually established in Scotland. Guess which year? I'm gonna read it to you. 1830, incredible. God bless Edinburgh. God bless the Scots for giving us McVitie's. These are great for dunking in your tea. Um, a wonderful choice, perhaps not a green pomegranate tea, but a Yorkshire, definitely. Johnny Walker, now, we buy the green label um, because it's like reasonably priced and it tastes really good. Um, we're not gonna get the fancier ones because the budget don't allow for it. Um, but this is great. This is obviously, we've already opened it. You've got the seal right here on a little sticky. Established 1820. Now, one of the really cool things about British food products is that they have been around for so long, hundreds of years, which is extremely cool. Let the truck go by. It's not something that we see in Canada unless we are consuming British products because obviously we're not gonna have Canadian products that are like 200 years old. It's just not gonna happen. Cheers. Mm. That's the good stuff. <laughs> uh -oh. Next, I rated our cupboards. Icing sugar, this is obviously open and all messed up from many baking attempts. So this is the Tate and Lyle Fairtrade Cane Icing Sugar made in the UK since 1878 asterisk. I don't know what that is referring to, um, but this does have the seal right on front. Delicious. Who wants some icing sugar? This is so gross. <laughs> Oh, that's actually quite nice with the whiskey kind of still in your mouth. Delicious. Next, <laughs> wow, my stomach is really starting to gurgle. Next we have Robinson's. Now this is something that is different to North America. This is squash. So what is this? You mix some of this with water to make juice. What we used to do in Canada was you would get frozen concentrate cans you have them in the freezer and then you take them out, you put them in a jug, you mix the jug with water and it like dissolves and then you pour your juice from that jug. Now instead, the Brits will have this. So you usually have this like in your cupboard when you want to have juice, you pour some into your cup. I'm starting to get the hiccups, uh-oh. You add some water and then that is your juice. Now you are supposed to dilute this, which I am not going to do, rest in peace. Um, but this peach raspberry one is delicious if you see it at the store absolutely wonderful now i actually prefer the canadian way of making juice but to be honest here in the uk my fridge doesn't have the extra space for a big jug of juice like i would in canada so instead you have this on the counter you pour some out sometimes i pour too much and sometimes i pour too little because i'm not that good at judging um whereas when you have it in a jug you know it is what it is. You fill it to this. The, you fill it to the fill line, and then it's fine. You don't have to judge it. Anyway, cheers. Ooh wee, that's delicious. Even even undiluted, it's delicious. You're supposed to dilute this, okay? Make sure you dilute it. But this one in particular, delicious. Also, real quick, do you like the bunting? I tried to find the Union flag bunting. Um, I can't find it anywhere. I don't know if you guys bought it all or what. This is as good as I could get, which is just like multicolored. <laughs> but what are you gonna do? Now, just a couple of things I saw at the store that I didn't buy, but they do have the seal. So Kellogg's, 
The Queen uh, has Kellogg's for breakfast, perhaps. Kellogg's has the seal. HP Sauce also has the seal right up top on the neck. We also have the dreaded Marmite. Yes, Marmite has the seal. I have taste tested a Marmite twice now um, and I'm not gonna do it again. So just enjoy this picture instead. Did you know Tabasco also has the seal? Yes, the royal family uses Tabasco. <laughs> Who would have thought? Okay, now let me just get my chair back to where it's supposed to be. This. Do you know what this is? Because I didn't until recently. This is Lyle's Black Treacle of Abram, Lyle, and Sons. So when I did a little bit of a Google, okay, take it with a grain of salt, we're talking around 1880s when the Scottish business, businessman Abram Lyle set up a sugar refinery in London with his five sons. Um, so we're talking about 1880s time period. It looks like it came from there, doesn't it? Now, I originally bought this because I made sticky toffee pudding, which I believe was on my Patreon account. You wanna watch that? Join me on Patreon, that's all I'm gonna say. I didn't know what treacle was, and when you read the back, it just says really just vaguely, Lyle's black treacle adds a distinctive, rich, dark flavor to, to, to traditional recipes. What does that mean? Now let's just pop this, pop it open. Oh, I can smell it already. Okay, well, once again, if you, <gasps> it landed face up, we're okay. That's gonna be a mess. Do you know how sticky this is? That's what it looks like. It's like sticky, horrible. I will say the sticky toffee pudding I made, I was quite surprised. That's all I'll say. But when it is uncooked, just straight raw type this, cheers. Whew, okay, that we're not doing again. Now I gotta go find the lid. So whether you like the royal family or you don't care about the family or perhaps you greatly dislike the royal family, I do hope you have a wonderful four day weekend doing whatever it is that you wanna do. Whether it's going to a parade, whether it's having a nap, Whatever it is, I hope you have a wonderful long weekend. If you like this video and you wanna watch more videos, why not check out this one where I taste test some of the weirdest British snacks. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, bye.